a ten thousand chariots, and them going without horses. The riders they cover them face, so you could not make them march in a smoky place. It's a musical. Melisandre Stampede. All joking aside, the Game of Thrones series is off, but one of the most enigmatic characters that was on almost the entirety of the show is Melisandre. Now she is still alive, much like every other character that was on the TV show that may have died is still alive in the books, and in this video in particular, I want to talk about, well, a little bit about who she is and some interesting aspects that I found about her character. Um, really, this video is uh, just made for entertainment purposes, but do me a massive favor if you can and you enjoy my content, Go ahead and slap a like on this video. Like goal is going to be 69. <laughs> and then also, make sure you're subscribed and uh, turn your notifications on. That way you'll get an alert every single time I drop a video throughout the wait for House of the Dragon Season 1, or as it's known on this channel, The Long Nights. Now one of the interesting things about Melisandre, aside from her appearance of having strangely blood red or fiery red eyes, is that she is only known, mainly known to dress in red garments, right? So she dresses the color of the Lord of Light, she's described as having a dress that is as bright as flame, most of the time she's wearing red robes. In these robes, we find out in the Dance of Dragons, she's got a bunch of pockets. She keeps different powders that do different things, right? So we realize that Melisandre mentions that her magic is the strongest at the wall, and we realize of the carved chest that she brought over with her, right? And she went to Dragonstone on her own accord. She went to Dragonstone looking for Azor Ahai, basically the prince that was promised, right? She thought it was Stannis, because Stannis was the one that was there. In all actuality, we know that really... Jon Snow is the Prince of Dragonstone, or Aegon is the Prince of Dragonstone. Some of you know him as Fagon, or Daenerys herself is the Princess of Dragonstone. Melisandre went to Westeros looking for one of those three individuals, and we know that the dragon has three heads, so she's looking for them. She's with one of them currently, Jon Snow. But anyway, she's got a bunch of pockets, and that reminded me, this is a totally different side tangent, it reminded me of Kvothe from the King Killer Chronicle. And if you are unaware, I've started making content on that book series written by Patrick Rockfuss. It's fucking amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's so, so good. I recommend watching some of my videos that I've made for it, but tread carefully because they're filled with spoilers. Um, but yeah, getting back on track here, we all know that Melisandre may in fact resurrect Jon Snow. Jon Snow is dead as fuck, lying dead in the snow, and Melisandre warns him before this happens to him, before he's caught off guard, before he's, before his life is ended, and he mutters, Go, go us. He, she says, keep the wolf near you at all times. She also says, watch out, there's daggers in the dark, and they're gonna get your ass. But Jon's like, whatever, I'm a, I'm a night watchman, I just do what I want. But, dude, she's, she's probably going to bring back Jon Snow. Like, Let's be honest, Melanie of Lot 7, as she's known when she was sold to the Temple of R'hllor and learned, you know, the common tongue, a shy, and high Valyrian, it seems as though George has positioned her at the wall. Remember, Stannis left to go take Winterfell. We don't exactly know what's happening. Obviously, the pink letter is uh, contents enough to make another video, but she's literally in the perfect place to bring back Jon Snow, and she will. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's more than likely that Melisandre will at the very least have a hand in this. Because, remember, she even mentions, like, while she's at the wall, the, uh, the power at the wall is strange. Her power grows. That's why she's not worried about running out of uh, the powders that she brought with her from a shy. She's got this carved chest, and it's, like, half empty. So she takes a pinch of certain types of powders that she keeps on her at all time. Uh, and, and she's not worried about them running out. Uh, even though she doesn't have the special ingredients, she knows how to me remake them. She just knows that her power is increased tenfold at the wall. She also senses a pale wooden face in a boy that howls like a wolf. And when she does this, she gets filled with fear. But more importantly, she gets excited. Uh, black blood trickles down her leg, but she almost is kind of orgasmic. Unless I read the words wrong. But I think... When you combine that with the fact that she mentions, oh, that's definitely the great other. That's something, you know, that's that's evil right there. That's what I'm fighting. She just confused. That's, in my opinion, the dark side of R'hllor that even though it's a dark side, it still has to be accepted, right? 
So accepting the dark side of R'hllor, if you ha if you are a red priest, may involve losing your faith. That's part of like that dark side, right? That's the case. Maybe that's what the Great Other is, right? They are the many-faced gods of the North, right? We don't we don't know their names. They are forgotten, but there are many of them. Bran is with Blood Raven right now. Blood Raven is. Uh, he's eating he's eating people yes they're drinking blood yes but it's all to increase their power to help save the world you can't have good without having a bit of evil and to be honest evil is subjective maybe if you have if we have a full understanding of these gods if we were these gods we would know the one true magic in this world is blood sacrifice if you want to do great things you must also do terrible things but anyway getting way back on track here I think that, and I've said this for a while now, that Jon Snow could maybe stay dead. If he does, he could, like, obviously return in the form of Ghost, his dire wolf. He's a main character. George does kill main characters. And even when he kills them and brings them back, they don't necessarily get POVs. So if that's the case, maybe we won't know Jon's thoughts anymore. But here's another idea. Melisandre can glamour people. She actually gla glamoured a rattle shirt in order to look like Mance when Mance was burned, right? So remember in the TV show, Jon Snop stops his, his uh, heart with an arrow because it's like uh, Mance is screaming and the whole glamouring thing doesn't happen on the TV show. But uh, Jon doesn't want everyone to hear Mance continue to scream, right? So in the books, it's actually rattle shirt and he's like pleading. He's like, okay, I give up. Please end it, right? And then that goes on for a while. So much so to the point where Melisandre's brooch, remember, she's she's actively glamouring rattle shirt to look like Mance Raider that's burning, right? It almost burns her skin because it goes on for so long. So when Jon fires the arrow and stops Mance's heart, she's grateful, even though Stannis isn't. Um, I just thought that was kind of interesting, but she wants to appear more mystical than she is. Like, basically, she thinks to herself in her POV that if men knew how hard it was, they wouldn't respect her, or fear her as much, rather, right? Respect and fear run hand in hand in this world, and I guess in the real world, too. Uh, but she likes to keep her secrets. So we learn from her POV that glamouring is a huge, massive thing, and that she does it in order to keep uh, the king beyond the wall alive, right? There may be a greater purpose that she's serving, but ultimately she is in control of them because she has this placed this ruby on them, and she's sort of like brainwashing them a little bit, right? So, so Mance is is glamoured as rattle shirt still alive. She shows Jon Snow this. Now, while I'm reading this, I couldn't help but think, like, okay, I know Jon Snow dies. I've read it, Dance with Dragons multiple times, right? This is one of my one of my saddest moments in realization, right? And especially since like. I, I've been waiting from first reading this, you know, around when I started making videos, but there's people that have been waiting even longer than I have. It just makes me sad to even think about that we haven't gotten Winds of Winter yet. But hopefully, it's coming out this year, right? Right? But anyway, maybe, maybe Jon Snow will stay dead. Maybe Melisandre doesn't have the power to bring back life from death, because if we know that if she's just changing the face of someone else, how hardcore and how much of a toll that takes on her, maybe she can't resurrect someone. Maybe... It's too much power. Maybe Jon Snow stays dead. If that's the case, maybe she will glamour Devin, who is Davos Seaworth's son, that is basically acting as her cupbearer. Maybe she will glamour Devin to look like Jon Snow, and that fake version of Jon Snow will lead the men of the Night's Watch and the Wildlings and all of the people that she's building up to follow her. Maybe they'll lead her... Maybe uh, the, 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 the glamoured Devin pretending to be Jon Snow will lead the men where she wants them to, right? She's kind of got Devin around her finger. She knows that Devin is in love with her, right? She can tell because when she smiles at him, he like just fucking loses it. He basically jizzes his pants. So maybe she could lead them north of the wall to go and fight Bran and the Great Other or the White Walkers, right? Or down south to go and help Stannis. Maybe she's still confused and thinks Stannis is the king doesn't realize Jon Snow is, and makes a grave mistake. That's kind of what all of these characters are famous for, right? Now, I, I, I'm going to get out of here because this is like a good point to wrap this up, but I do want to mention that it's interesting that Melisandre is said to be taller than most knights. She has a heart-shaped face, skinny waist, and big old titties. 
perfect woman in my opinion uh when you combine that the fact that she is like glowing fire eyes it's amazing um carice van outen did an impeccable job performing her on-screen counterpart uh i will say the thing that's of note here is that melisandre's third eye is at her throat right george mentions that her brooch is otherwise referred to as her third eye most people their third eye is on their forehead, right? It's the, the eye that can see things that the conscious mind cannot, right? That's, that's a terrible way of putting it. But Melisandre's is not at her mind, and that would symbolize enhanced thinking, right? Thinking outside the box. It's at her throat. So that means, in my opinion, she speaks more truth than anyone else in the story. Obviously, she has a trouble seeing exactly what the flames are trying to show her, but it's mentioned that every single priest of Valor has trouble seeing what's in the flames. It's a goddamn bright fire. You ever stared at fire for a long time? It's hard to make out what it's saying. But anyway, she's also noticed as being the best one. Like, one of the priests of Valor, she's out of all of her peers, she's the best one to be able to do this. So if that's the case, maybe Melisandre and all of her visions... Some of the ones that we think she's gotten wrong are just all misinterpreted. And eventually, we're going to find out that she speaks nothing but the truth. Okay, that last little thing was kind of weak, but I just thought it was cool that her mind's eye was at her throat. Uh, you all let me know what you think about this video down below in the comment section. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. My name's Mark, and this has been Sir Hunts. There he is. Long night. Zeldrizas, Bustari. Ixos. Now, oh yeah, slap a like on this video. Like goal is going to be 69. <laughs> Sucking dick and eating pussy.